Merry Christmas to you. Uh, if you haven't had, have a, haven't had the chance to meet you yet, I'm Don, one of the elders here. Great to be able to welcome you along this morning. What a great reason to gather. I mean, it's the Lord's Day anyway, it's Sunday, but also Christmas Day, uh, which is, uh, again, like double reasons to gather together. Just so that um, I maybe can uh, get to know you a little bit better, who is the, let's open presents first thing Sunday morning kind of people? Christmas morning, you already have open presents. Who's the let's wait till after church? Anybody in the wait till after church category? Anyone in there, they're already open. You didn't even wait till today. <laughs> Christmas Eve kind of people. Yeah, anyone? Yeah, just meh. Presents, not really in them so much. Barry? Really? <laughs> I didn't believe you. Uh, and also, just so I know, like, kind of how long to go for today, who's, who's hosting Christmas lunch or something at their house today? Hosting, 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 so I've enough of you. So, like, 40 minutes is going to be okay. 30 minutes. 20 minutes. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. All right, let's, let's do it. So, uh, today, so we, we are, we're going to finish with um, some scripture kind of ringing in our ears as we leave today. So we're not going to sing any more songs. Uh, we're going to uh, finish with the scriptures today. 15 minutes worth of scriptures based on the feedback this morning, uh, especially you people who are both hosting and also doing presents after church. Um, are very keen to, uh, to do that. This is what John says. So we've been spending a lot of time with John this year at Cedar Light. We've read all the way through his... Uh, Revelation is a letter of revealing Jesus. Spent heaps of time with John. This is what John says about why Jesus came. So why do we celebrate Christmas? Why, I mean, we're here on a Sunday anyway, but why are we celebrating every Sunday? And why are we in particular celebrating on Christmas um, that Jesus came? This is what John writes about why Jesus came in one of his letters. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world doesn't know us is that it didn't know Him. Beloved, it's talking to us, we are God's children now. And what we will be has not yet appeared, but we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him, because we shall see Him as He is. And everyone who thus hopes in Him purifies himself as He is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness, sin is lawlessness. And this is where he says, why Jesus came. You know that he appeared in order to take away sins. And in him there's no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. Whoever practices Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared, here's another reason, was to destroy the works of the devil. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning because he's been born of God. By this it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother." So let's pray and we'll see what God will have for us today. Father, again, we just want to thank you for Jesus. What an incredible gift. Your, your love, your mercy, your affection towards the world. Even though we turned away, even though we didn't reach out to you, even though we um, ruined everything, you still love us. You sent your son for us, even identifying with us by him becoming one of us. You're, you're such an amazing God. And so help us today uh, in our hearing and as we seek wisdom and seek you in your scriptures, help us to become more like Jesus in whose name we ask. Amen. So why did Jesus come? Firstly, it's in the first verse of this chapter, uh, he says, behold, or check it out, or observe, or see, or what I'm about to say is super important, so please pay attention. Be held by this. Think about this. Behold, God loves you. 
And the rest of the passage expands upon the fact that God loves you. All the other reasons flow out of this reason. Why did Jesus come? Because God loves you. That's why we sing about Jesus coming. Uh, Sometimes or ordinarily, when you hear, or not so much us in our day, uh, but if, if um, we can abstract ourselves from Australia, the most peaceful, prosperous, comfortable city, a uh, nation that's ever existed perhaps, uh, and you think about you're an enemy of a very, very powerful king and that very powerful king is coming. Ordinarily, this would be terrifying news. Oh, the, the conquering king, the purely volitional king, the king who does whatever he wants, The king who everything the king tries to do, he does with 100% success. And that king, we are his enemies and he is coming to us, would ordinarily be terrifying. But John begins this part of the letter telling us why did Jesus come? Why did this conquering king come? What did he come to conquer? It wasn't us. He came because of his love for us. Secondly, he came to make us his father's children. Didn't just come to make us subjects didn't just come to conquer a foreign land and make it subject to himself. He came to bring us into his family. He came just to make us sons and daughters of the king. It's amazing. Verse one and two. He came because he loves you. He came to make you his father's children. Thirdly, he came to take away our sin. Verse five. Even the worst sinner, the very worst sinner, Paul says this in uh, his letter to Timothy. He says, this saying is trustworthy and worthy of full acceptance. He's saying, you can trust this saying, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. John says it, Paul says it. Of whom I am the foremost, Paul says, I'm the foremost sinner, but I receive mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. So saying, you think you're a bad sinner? You think you're an enemy of God? You think you strayed far away? You think, and I've heard this said many times in my life, uh, where I've invited somebody to something in the Christian community and they say, man, if I step foot in the church building, like stand aside because lightning's gonna, lightning's gonna strike down or the building's gonna cl- you know, collapse in as if there was something special about the building. But the the thinking is, oh, I've strayed so far from God. I'm such a rebellious sinner that God couldn't possibly save me or love me. And Paul writes a couple of thousand years ago, actually, the reason God saved me, the guy who used to hunt down and murder Christians, was so that nobody forever would be able to say, I'm too far from God's saving grace. And so to you and to me, uh, we can be sure Jesus came because God loves you. Jesus came to make you a son or daughter of God, the Father. And he came to completely deal with your sin. And there is not a sinner alive today who can say, I'm too far from the grace of God. It's amazing. It's wonderful. Fourth through from this passage, Jesus came to destroy the work of the devil. So we've seen this, actually we spent a lot of weeks looking at uh, what is the work of the devil in um, the letter of Revealing Jesus, one of John's other writings. And we saw, uh, let me quote uh, John Piper, he says, so now we can see better what the Son of God came to destroy. He didn't come as a conquering king to destroy us who were rebellious enemies. He came to save us. He came to destroy our enemies. He came to destroy our deceiver. The works of the devil. Sin is lawlessness. The works of the devil are sin. Sin is rebellion against God. Sin is missing the mark. Sin is not doing or living how God would have us live. All lawlessness is rebellion against the right of God to rule over us, says Piper again. The work of Satan is to tempt us to reject the authority of God and thus become like God ourselves. Satan works to nurture and cultivate the pride that puts its own desires above the law of God. This is lawlessness. And it's the essence of sin. And this is what the Son of God came to destroy in you and me. And so another reason that Jesus came, he came because God loves you. He came to make us sons and daughters. He came to to totally deal with sin. And he came to crush our enemy. 
Where else did he come? He came to free us to live holy lives. So you look at the, uh, this in verse 9. Um, uh, committing sin implies a continuous action. He came that we would do the opposite of that, not to continue to pursue our rebelliousness, but because he's come to save us from our rebellion, we would do the exact opposite and live like him. We would actually be like Jesus. He says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So he's not saying that you in your actions today will live perfect lives. He's not saying uh, that you're going to all of a sudden never sin again, never succumb to temptation, never be tempted. He's saying that we're going to pursue righteousness. We're going to pursue the righteousness of the one who pursued us. That's what he's saying. Jesus came, also in verse 9, to give us life. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. That's actually from the next chapter. Why did Jesus come? He came to give us life. Not just to, to uh, save us from our enemy, although he did that. Not just to save us from our sin and, and make us uh, no longer God's enemies, but he actually came to make us, uh, uh, not just to, to save us from death, but to give us life. Not to make, take us from in debt to neutral, but to take us from in debt to the inheritance of Jesus. Took us from not bad people to good people, took us from dead people and made us alive in Jesus for eternity. All these things Jesus did, this is, this is why he came. Jesus was born, why us? Jesus was born so that we could have new birth. This is what it says uh, back in chapter three, verse nine. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning for God's seed abides in him. Not just a new future, again, not just a, a slate being wiped clean, but a new nature, not just a fresh start, a new creation. Jesus didn't come to wipe your slate clean and then say, go and give it another try. He came to live the perfect life that we should live and then gifts to us the reward of living a perfect life. He takes our old heart of stone and gifts to us a new heart, a heart of flesh. When it says God's seed abides in you, it's talking about you've been born again of God. So that when I look at my kids, I've got three kids, <clears throat> uh, and I see characteristics of myself in them. For me, I see uh, actually a lot of the things that I recognize of myself as a kid that I'm like, oh man, uh, that's a, we're going to have to deal with some of those things. And others that are looking there and go, and I go, oh yeah, this, this kid's just like me. And when someone looks at my kid and says, man, your kids are so cute, I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, but with, it, with our perfect heavenly father, uh, what this means is that he is, he hasn't just, he has, but not just given us his Holy Spirit as a deposit, that is also the seed, but he has made us his children. He's made us like him, made us like him in creation, made us like him again in our union with Christ. So that we are, we are a new creation. Paul calls it a new creation in Ephesians. Jeremiah calls it a new heart. Ezekiel calls it a new spirit. Being born of God is being changed by God so that we're no longer under the dominion of sin and lawlessness. We're now under the dominion of Christ and eternal life. You are, if you're in Christ, you are a new creation, a new nature, a new heart with new desires. It's new birth. This is why we celebrate Christmas. Because God came for us, not as the conquering king to crush us, his rebellious enemies, but to come and save us, his enemies, and to crush our enemy, sin, lawlessness, and even death. Came to make us children of God, we'd have the inheritance of Christ, came to 
to make us a new creation. He came to give us life. God has given us an unfathomable honour by gifting all of these things to us and even more, Christ became one of us. He identifies with you and, and with me. And as we continue to read through scripture, we see he identifies with us in every way, in the frailty of our bodies, in the grief of the world around us that's still subject to sin and, and the curse, uh, even to death on the cross. He, he loves you. He became like us so that he could make us like him. And this is, these are just some of the reasons. This is the 15-minute version of why we celebrate Christmas. Man, it's, it is the most wonderful thing. Uh, the words we were singing before, like, joy to the world, the Lord has come. Again, not as a terrifying, conquering king, but as a wonderful, saving big brother to bring us back into the family. It's wonderful. Let's celebrate him today. Father God, I want to thank you again uh, for these wonderful promises we have in Jesus. You've made us siblings of the king of the universe because he came like us, sought us out and saved us and collected us back to you. Thank you for giving us a new heart, a new nature, making us a new creation. Thank you for making us like Jesus. I want to thank you for his perfect life and the, the, the reward for that perfect life being gifted to us and the cost of our sinful life being borne by him on our cross. We're so thankful. We're so grateful to you for your love and for your mercy. Help us to today in particular, but every day, uh, live as your children because that's who we are. In Jesus' name.